limiting continuity is the heading. These are ideas that I have sowed the seed about and talked about informally over the last week or so. But now it's time to do this in a, a, a what mathematicians call a rigorous way. We want to get like watertight, detailed, formal definitions for all of these things. Okay? Um, both of these hang together even though they are um, quite big ideas. So it makes sense to introduce them simultaneously. This thing here, weird kind of new notation. Um, I'm going to read it out for you. I'm going to tell you how I read this. And then you're going to tell me what the number is. So the way I would read this is, and I'd love you to write this underneath so that when you refer back to this um, in like three or four or five weeks, when it's been a while since you've touched this, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is what that weird notation was talking about. The way I would read this is the limit. That's what the lim is short for. The limit as x approaches in this case, 3 of x squared is. So, lim stands for limit. x with an arrow towards 3 says I'm approaching. I'm putting in x values that get closer and closer and closer to 3. And what I'm putting them into is this particular function up here. You can have any function you like. I'm just using this as a nice simple example because we can actually work this out. As x gets closer and closer to 3, what does x squared get closer and closer and closer to? Answer? 9. Okay. So as the x values change, for example, if uh, I'm going to get my calculator here, if x were 2.9, that's a number that's close to 3. I don't know what 2.9 squared is, but I'm about to find out. 2.9 squared is 8.41. So I'm getting to 9. If I put in numbers that are closer to 3, like 2.99, I get 8.9401. And I can get as close as I like. That phrase is actually really important. The reason why 9 is the limit is because we can get the mathematical way of saying it, the technical, rigorous way is of saying it is, we can get arbitrarily close to this number. Right? So if I say, okay, how close would you like to get to 9? I want to get to 8.999999999. That's how close I want to get. You can give me an x value that will get that close or closer, right? Or 9.00000001. Is there an x value that can get that close to 9? And the answer is, yes, there is. I can get arbitrarily close, as close as I want. Now in this case, it's a bit weird. Why do we introduce this notation? Uh, I want you to think back to when I introduced function notation. Do you remember? I was like, why, why are we talking about this? When we have perfectly good notation, why not just say y equals? Why f of x and this weird kind of idea which overlaps with use of brackets and all that kind of thing that's confusing? And the answer was, at least one of them, was you can talk about things like this. If you have a function where this is true, what do you know about the function? It's an even function. You're going to have line symmetry around the y-axis, right? And accordingly, if I say this, what do you know about the function? It's an odd function. It's going to have point symmetry or rotational symmetry around the origin, right? Right at 0, 0. So when you have function notation, you can talk about properties that you really couldn't talk about before. It's the same deal with limit notation. Uh, and limits and continuity, which is a new idea we're going to get into. Okay, so let me give you some other examples. For instance, this is example one. So, example two. I need to introduce a bit more uh, notation here. So, if I say limit as x approaches infinity, we've talked about this before in, t in the context of graphing, right? So, I might say something like this. Okay. Now, this is important as an example because, unlike this one. Right? Unlike this example, where you could have got 9 just by putting in x equals 3. You can actually substitute it in. You cannot substitute in x equals infinity, because infinity is not a number. It's a concept. It's an idea. It behaves a little bit like a number, but in other ways, it does not. Right? So you're like, well, what do I do with this thing? Um, the arithmetic of infinities is a tricky thing that is not within the scope of this course, but we can still understand the idea as x gets enormous. This becomes 1 over an enormous number. 
It's one over an enormous number. Now, I want you to notice how this fits into this. Okay? The function 1 over x. If I want to get to a value like 0 0.0000000001, is there an x value that can get to that? The answer is yes. No matter how close you get to 0, um, arbitrarily close, you can find an x value that'll do that. Okay? But when you start thinking about this function here, immediately you come into some problems. So one of the important things about this is you remember I said you can approach and get really, really small, uh, sorry, really, really uh, close values below 9, and you can also get really close values above, right? So when you come from one direction, I used to be able to say that name with a straight face, anyway. <laughs> well, when I come from one direction, or come from the other direction, you come to the same value, right? But when you think about this guy, this is an important um, case study for us, you run into a problem. Hmm. You know what this graph looks like. You know what it looks like, right? It's got its two branches, right? So when you say, hey, when x gets closer and closer to zero, what does this thing approach? You sort of run into this snag. How do you state an answer? Let's just underneath draw the graph. <laughs> In a small version is all, all enough. Now, when x is approaching positive infinity, the limit is unambiguously 0. There's nothing else that it approaches. Okay? But when you get closer to 0, well, if you try putting in positive values that are close to 0, like 0 0.1 or 0 0.01, etc., what are you going to approach? You're going to approach a huge number. In fact, now this is, this is weird. This is where it's, it's similar but different. You can become arbitrarily close to positive infinity, right? Give me a number, a million, a billion, a Google, anything you like. I can give you an x value that will get to that 1 over x, will get up to there, okay? So I can get arbitrarily close. I can get as big as you like. Okay? That's what happens when you put in 0 0.0001 or whatever. But when you put in negative, 0.0001 or those kinds of things. You do not approach negative infinity, do you? You instead approach, sorry, did I say that right? Yeah. I, I, said, I said the answer because I was thinking the answer. You don't approach positive infinity, you approach negative infinity because it's, it's dropping like a rock down here. Okay. So therefore this, as it's stated, has no answer. There is no limit. Uh, mean girls, is that where that comes from? The limit doesn't exist. Yes. Okay. <laughs> However, this concept is still important to us, so we distinguish between approaching zero from the positive side, like this, or approaching zero from the negative side. Here's some new notation for you. When you put a plus sign in the index, right, in the power, as if it were a power, it's not a power, because it's not even a number, okay? What this means is you're approaching zero from the positive side. That's from right to left. Does that make sense? So this is approaching from the right. So therefore, this is equal to positive infinity. Okay. However, if on the other hand, I approach from the negative side, right, so it's not a power, but it looks like one. It's in the same spot. If I approach it from the negative side, I get the opposite limit. Okay. All right. Are you happy with that? Yeah. So for limit, uh, if x is going to say, how can you get a number that's close above nine? Because like, if by putting in three point zero one, or three point zero 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 one, or three point zero 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 one, um, I just put in numbers that are above three, because I can approach three from two different directions, right? So I can approach from, um, I can approach from below. Three, that's one of the ways we say it, rather than from left or right, you can say from above or below. Um, and that will give me these values for x squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. 